Hi, I'm Amy, this is House of Nash Eats, and today we are making divinity candy. So the first thing that we really want to do when we're making Divinity, because it's candy and it's kind of time sensitive, we want to get all of our ingredients ready to go. So we're prepping. We're gonna start out by chopping one cup of pecans. And these are just unroasted pecans. One thing to note is if you store your nuts in the freezer to, keep, to make them last longer, you want to pull these out and make sure that they're at room temperature so you're not adding cold nuts to your candy. Otherwise, it'll make your divinity seize. Okay, so we'll set those to the side. And then the next thing that you want to do is you want to separate your egg yolks and your egg whites. You won't use the yolks for this recipe, so use them to make some homemade ice cream or some hollandaise sauce, or there's lots of other great recipes that you can make with just egg yolks or just toss them. So I separate my egg yolks by cracking the shell and then using both halves of the shell to tip the yolk back and forth and let the egg white come off. And we'll put the yolk in another bowl. There's lots of other methods you can use to do this. Um, you can use like, there are even little tools to help separate. Some people will use their hands and just dump the whole egg into their hand and use their fingers to cup the yolk and let the egg white drain through. Just make sure you don't get any of the egg yolk into your bowl with your egg whites or they won't whip as well. We want to whip these so that stiff peaks form. Now that we have all the ingredients prepped, we're going to start making the syrup. So what we're going to do is in a medium heavy duty saucepan, make sure it's not one that's too thin, we're going to combine two and a half cups of granulated sugar. It's candy, right? We've got to use sugar. And half a cup of water and half of a cup of light corn syrup. Oh, and a little bit of salt. It's just an eighth of a teaspoon. And I'll leave a link below to the printable recipe so that you can print it out and have everything ready to go so you're not scrambling to figure out a measurement when you're making your divinity. So now we're going to turn this on to medium, medium high heat and cook it until the sugar is dissolved. Okay, so we are going to cook this until it comes to a boil. And once it starts boiling, then we're going to stop stirring and attach a candy thermometer to the side of our pot. We're going to let that keep cooking for about eight to 10 minutes until it reaches about 260 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if you live at a higher altitude, I've heard that that can affect your candy making and you're supposed to decrease your temperature by two degrees for each thousand feet you are above sea level. I'm at sea level, so I'm cooking to 260 degrees Fahrenheit, but it's pretty easy calculations if you know what level you are at. Okay, so while we're waiting for this to come to a boil and then come to 260 degrees Fahrenheit, we're going to start whipping our egg white. So our egg whites. So we've got two room temperature egg whites in our bowl. And I'm going to use my whisk attachment. We're going to beat this until it comes to stiff peaks. And we're gonna do it on about medium high speed. Okay, we're not quite there yet with our egg whites, but this has started boiling. So I'm going to stop stirring and add my candy thermometer. We're just going to attach it to the side and let this syrup continue to cook until it reaches 260 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know if I've repeated that enough times, but that's the temperature you want. Okay, now if you're looking for stiff peaks, you want to be able to pull your beater off and flip it over and it should hold its peak. This one's flopping over, so we're not quite there yet. It's easiest to get here when you use a whisk attachment. Okay, now we've got some more volume and you can see that when you lift the attachment out, it holds these nice clouds of whipped egg white. Those are stiff peaks. You don't wanna to go too far or you'll risk breaking your egg whites. So once you reach stiff peaks, go ahead and take that whisk attachment out. We're going to switch to the paddle attachment for when we add our sugar syrup. 
Okay, I'm gonna say this right now because once this mixer is on, it's going to be hard for you to hear me. But once this reaches temperature, we're going to very, very slowly drizzle it in while the mixer is running over about a two minute period. So it's going to be a really thin trickle of this hot liquid. And as it gets poured into the egg whites, it will cook them and increase the volume quite a bit. And then once we've done that, we're going to continue beating for a while, which is why you really can't make this recipe with a hand mixer. It's going to burn out your motor. You can't really make it by hand either. Not that I've ever tried, but I really recommend only attempting this recipe if you've got a stand mixer that's got a strong motor and can handle it. Okay, we are at 260 degrees Fahrenheit. That's also known as hardball stage. And we're going to turn this off and start drizzling this in really slowly for about two minutes. You can stop and check your divinity while it's going. So it's going to be totally fine to check it and make sure you don't go too far. So let's go ahead and test it. This has been going for about four minutes. It's probably not ready, but I wanna show you what it looks like when it's not ready. So I use spoons that I've coated in a little bit of cooking spray so that the divinity will slide right off. And you wanna kind of plop it onto a parchment paper or silicone baking mat lined cookie sheet and see if you can swirl it on top and if it will hold the swirl. And if it holds the swirl, then it's ready to go and you can add in your vanilla and your pecans. But if like this one, it starts to puddle and lose its shape in just like 10 seconds, it's not ready and you need to keep beating for another minute or two or maybe even three minutes. So we'll keep going and then we'll test again. See what we get. And this is totally edible. It's just going to have more of a texture of like taffy or caramel or something like that. So you can see it's holding a little more shape than the previous one, but I think we can go just a little bit farther. I'm only going to do 30 seconds this time and see if we can get it just where we want it. Okay, so we're going to try this again. It should look thick and not too glossy. And you can see it's holding its shape, whoops, which means we are ready to go. So we're going to add in our vanilla and our chopped pecans and mix that just until they're mixed in. Okay, and then we're just going to scoop this out and use our spoons to drop these onto our baking sheet. Okay, and if you want to, you can press a whole pecan down into the top of each piece of Divinity just to kind of show what's inside or to make it look decorative. Usually I skip that, but it's something that you could choose to do to make it look fancy and nice. Now, these should set up within just a couple of minutes and you can enjoy them. They should be stored in an airtight container for about five to seven days on the counter at room temperature. Okay, so my divinity has set up and I am ready to taste this candy. I think I'm going to go with this piece. Mmm, it's so good. It is kind of like a cross between nougat and fudge, but without any chocolate. Mm. The pecan is the main flavor with sugar. It's a very sweet candy. It's a Southern confection and it is divine, hence the name. I think you will love this divinity candy. I hope you guys love this divinity recipe. If you like my channel, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe so you get all the great recipes that are coming your way.